In this recording, I'm going to show you the effect that a Moodle theme has on user experience and navigation. The first uh, theme that I'll introduce you to is a boost theme. And then later in the recording, I'll also show you the snap theme. What you'll notice immediately is that the user experience is quite different. And we're looking effectively here at exactly the same course, just displayed under two different themes. So I'll start with the boost theme. Boost is kind of the out of the box theme for Moodle. It's a standard theme. It has a fairly stripped back uh, aesthetic. It's fairly vanilla. It can be styled up. Uh, it has some side navigation, and that side navigation can be collapsed out of way. But this side navigation is important, as of course it is the ways that students navigate through the content. So you can see the navigation here. A student can make a selection that will bring them into the content area. In this case, they get a little bit of a description. And then there is a Moodle book. A Moodle book is a collection of content. And under this standard boost theme, what you see is the description. And then you need to click into that book in order to view the content. And it's at about this point that the user interface starts to become quite complex and it becomes a little bit cramped. You'll notice that now we have different layers of navigation. We have the navigation on the left and also now some additional navigation on the right. This additional navigation is to navigate through the contents of this book. So effectively, it's the page turning navigation. But what that the impact that has on the course design is what space is left over for the content itself is quite cramped. Now, a user can choose to collapse this navigation out of view and they can reclaim some of that screen. But it is worth noting that that user experience, unless the student intervenes, can be quite a complex one. Let me flip over now to the boost theme. Again, we're dealing with the identical course, but I'll show you the user experience in boost. So here we are. Again, we have side navigation. Uh, the user experience now, I think, is a much richer one. There is a visual banner. There's a fairly intuitive navigation on the left-hand side. It includes features such as the search feature. It also gives some intelligence to the user as they're navigating through. They can see that in each section of content, there's a progress, progress zero of two. So there's some ambition in that. The students can work through that content and once they've met the, the whatever requirements are defined within that content, they'll see this progress bar increase. And when they've met all the conditions, a big green tick will appear. As we navigate into the content itself, this is the same content as you saw previously, but its visual arrangement on screen is different and to my mind better. Uh, we see the book and its description, but we also can see the internal structure of that book. So you can see the the contents. And in this way, a student can make decisions even before they access the book. They can see the extent of the content and they can jump to a specific area of interest if they choose to. Once they're in the book, the screen automatically has closed down the side navigation, for want of a better word, in favour now of the internal book navigation. So the use of the user interface is a much more um, considered one and it uses the best available space for the screen. Now that I've shown the user experience from the end user's perspective, from the student's perspective, let's consider it from the developer or designer's perspective. Again, I'll start in Boost. So here we are. We already have a relatively complicated uh, screen layout, but if I were to go back up to the home screen, and to start to edit this content. In order to do that, I need to turn editing on. To do that, I go to this action menu and turn editing on here. And the moment that I do that, my interface changes considerably. And I have a, a large collection of new controls that are available to me. So uh, the interface from the developer's perspective gets more complex when you're editing. And you need to constantly swap between editing on where you're making the changes and editing off when you're previewing those changes as if you were the end user. Let me contrast that now to the Snap experience. Here we are, we're in the same course. I'll go back to the home page. 
with Snap, there isn't actually that turn editing on, turn editing off workflow. It doesn't exist in Snap. If you can edit the course, editing is on all the time, but it is subtle. So within the Snap interface, rather than having to turn things on and having a collection of new controls, what they do instead is if you were an editor, you get these rather subtle visual controls that appear underneath each item. So for instance, if I want to edit this book, I simply click on the pen symbol and that I'm immediately effectively into the editing mode of Moodle and I can make my changes immediately. The advantage for a Moodle developer is this is a very much more rapid way of developing because you're effectively working in a completely WYSIWYG environment where any change you make, you're seeing that change immediately and you're not constantly swapping between being a designer of a course and looking at the student experience of the same course. As an instructional designer, I can now be more thoughtful because Snap has more design features for me, I can utilize those in my design. So for instance, as I'm working through this content, I can achieve an aesthetic and a layout and be confident that that's the same experience that the student will also see. These additional features of being able to display on the home screens, the internal structures means that I can consider how I design my content and also effectively to chunk it up into smaller sections for the students because this information is exposed to me. I can make decisions about how much I might put into a book and when I might introduce an activity to challenge what they've learned in that book. And you can see as you go down that you can see a bit of a rhythm when you design with the theme in mind. The other thing that's interesting to note with both of these themes is the mobile browser experience. Let me just show you that. First of all, in this case, I'll start with the Snap environment. Snap has been designed front and center for mobile browsing. So it designs itself very well for a mobile screen. You'll notice that on smaller format devices, that side navigation is collapsed out of view and it is available to students, but it's available underneath this little button, which is at the bottom right of the screen. And you think, well, why is that button there? And it's because that's where your finger is if you're on a mobile device. So they've thought about where they place the navigation. So let me show you that same design now in Boost. Again, it does uh, adapt to the device. You'll notice it's collapsed the navigation down here so that it um, fits well within the screen parameters. I guess the difference here is that the uh, menus on the larger format devices are not displayed unless the user chooses to turn them off. Whereas as you, when we saw that in, in Snap, it basically decides whether to display the navigation or not, dependent on the device that you're viewing it on.